here we are okay welcome everyone i suppose that we will uh toss this up on youtube as well i'm gonna do a patch read of 722 i have skimmed through the patch notes before but i want to read them once again here and just see um see what we can do See what we can do in this new patch uh it seems like a really nice patch first off it seems so much fun so uh, i'm very excited for this but without without um uh, spoiling too much i also want to give it a little bit of time because we just went live i want to start with reading everything immediately but uh, this will go this will go on youtube as well Touch reading time right now. <clears throat> All right, so let's start reading now, I guess, and we're going to um, play TA after this. I can spoil that much. So welcome to anyone who wants to watch. Let's start reading 722. General changes. Added a new scepter upgrade for all 24 remaining heroes without an upgrade. Which is massive, first of all, and really fun. I mean, Aghanim Scepter is one of those more fun items in Dota, giving unique interactions. And also, a lot of them can be uh, adding something new and exciting to the game. So, I uh, love the idea of every hero having an Aghanim's upgrade. Update various of the old Scepter upgrades. Scepter can now be consumed as a buff by purchasing a 2000 gold recipe upgrade. The Scepter buff does not grant secondary stat bonuses. So, for 6200 gold, you can have the Aghanim's effect, but not the stats. So it's pretty expensive, and most of the time that will probably just be like a really farmed 6 slot kind of deal that you're gonna do it, but you can now um, eat the Aghanims as well, which is nice. Yo, Zakot! Patch and stuff. I'm sad all the tickets in TI in uh, Shanghai sold out instant. Oh, I'm sorry, Zakot. If you tried to get a ticket and you didn't get it, that sucks, man. That sucks. Yeah, I heard. And the pricing was high, too. Thank you for the resub, dude. All right, let's continue here. Secondary... <clears throat> what do we have? Whoops. I forget that I can't click on this thing. If I click, it's just bugging out. Um, Roshan now drops a consumable scepter, scepter buff item. The third Roshan will randomly drop either a consumable scepter or a refreshing shard. Which I guess refreshing shard is mostly stronger, but sometimes the scepter is going to be bigger, depending on your heroes. Um, the fourth Roshan has both, which is so big. The late game Roshan... Getting a free Aghanims for one of your heroes, and Refresher Shard, and Aegis, and Cheese. I mean, Jesus Christ, dude. That is such a big thing. It just power spike. Um, added new visual under heroes to have Scepter. Added Mars and Wisp to Captain's Mode. Uh, deny experiences change to be a little bit more experience if you get denied that before. 40 instead of 35. The death cost change is pretty big for early game in particular. You don't have the 50, so feeding is uh, less costly early on. Um, bit of tweaks here to the kill streak XP bounty. Pretty big tweak. You get a lot more experience for ending a kill streak. Um, XP requirement to reach level 5, 6, reduced from 600, 620 to 580, 600. Uh, XP required to reach level 19, increased by 100 each level. Hmm. So late game is harder, or 19 plus increased. Yeah. A little bit harder to get those late game levels. Uh, Siege creeps base attack time from 2.7 to 3. Siege creeps now spawn uh, two units. Siege creeps now spawn two units at 35 minutes instead of 30 minutes. And siege creeps can no longer be dominated, enchanted, or converted. So just general nerfs to siege. I mean, this is a big thing. You can't take over siege creeps anymore. That's pretty large change. Tier 3 towers have uh, more damage. Tier 1 protection aura increased by 1 armor, tier 2 by 1 armor, and tier 2 plus towers now have multi-shot attack when glyph is activated. It attacks up to 2 additional targets and it prioritizes closest units. This is 
pretty strong. I mean, yeah, Glyph is on a very long cooldown, but multi-shotting with 175 damage is a lot bigger than not multi-shotting with 152. Um, so I like that. That's pretty cool. Also makes me think that a uh, Bloodlusted or Arc Warden Bubbled Tower with a uh, Glyph active is just going to clear out the threat of being pushed. Um, slightly adjusted the uh, Radiant safely in hard camp position and terrain nearby. Okay, we'll have to check that later. Uh, reduce the chase duration uh, of the hard camp neutrals on the Radiant safe lane area. Makes sense, so a little bit harder to pull the Radiant hard camp. Um, middle to two towers now moved further to the left. No longer has vision over the big camp on the right. Yeah. Yeah, that's really annoying. I've been caught because I farmed that and the enemy had vision on it. It's annoying. Um, just a tree line, radiant, blah, blah, blah. I mean, these, these are main, minor things. Adjusted various new tire and spawn boxes. Illusions can now lifesteal. Big. Big, big, big. Not really that massive that illusions can lifesteal, but the bigger change is this. Lifesteal now works against enemy illusions. Calculated pre-illusion amplifications. So what this means is that if you're playing some hero with Vladimir's or Lifesteal or whatever, and you're playing against PL or Naga, you're not just going to get dominated by the fact that they're illusions, because you can't lifesteal off illusions. Similarly, if I'm against PL and I have a Satanic, then it's almost impossible to get the lifesteal against PL uh, normally. But now it's not, because now Satanic is going to work. Uh, even if you hit the illusions. So that's a really, really big buff to Satanic against against PL or Naga. Uh, and a big quality of life. I hate the fact that you can't lifesteal from illusions. So very nice. You can no longer share items for a region. Um, base armor increased by 2 on Roshan. Attack damage per minute increased to 6. The last hit gold has been um, more evenly distributed. Thank you. Um, get some water. Soda stream water, even. Very nice. Uh, and last hit XP bounty is reduced from 750 to 400. So it matters a little bit less if you get lasted on Roche, which, yeah, I can agree. Sometimes it was a little bit too big of a swing if you get lasted when the enemy's doing Roche. And yeah, I kind of like this. I like this change. Um, Soda stream pog. Yeah, dude, it's good. Good. Okay, heroes can now have non-standard initial attack speed values. Previously it was 100 for all heroes. Now we have 100 for all heroes, but Abaddon has 115. Uh, Broodmother, 125. 25 attack speed added. That's a pretty big buff just like that. I mean, that's a lot of attack speed. Um, but we'll get down to the hero changes later. CM got 15 attack speed, Jaro got 25, Marana got 15. Jaro getting 25 is really big. He's such a... DPS hero getting 25 uh, is really big. 15 for Silencer. Slark gets 20. 20 more attack speed on Slark. Just like that. That's really impactful, I think. Um, we'll see how impactful it is, but I, I believe that that's a really big thing. Venomancer got 15 uh, attack speed and Weaver got 20. Heroes can now have non-standard base regen. So Clink has 0, 25. I think 0... Is zero the base for every hero then? I assume so, right? I'm pretty sure zero is the base and then you just have region based on your int or whatever, right? Um, yeah, so zero 25, a little bit more mana region. Zero 75 is quite a bit more. 0 0.5 for Pugna, Shadowfin on 0 0.3. Techie's got 1.0, which is really impactful for him. Tinker's 0 0.25, not that big. Kriant's 0 0.5, kind of helpful. Weaver getting 0.4 and Zeus 0.25. But biggest here is, I mean, biggest is Techies and then Lich getting that mana. I mean, 0.75 can help him now that he doesn't have the Dark Ritual anymore. Can't sacrifice. Observer Wards, cost, cost decreased down from 75 to 50. Gold Bounty increased from 100 plus 2 to 100 plus 4 uh, per minute. Um, and experience is also increased by 2. So, wow. Cheap Wards. And also cheaper to deward. Now have a stock limit, max limit of 10, starting capacity of 4, and replenish rate of 70 seconds. This is super interesting. 
70 seconds restock time on sentry wards and a max limit of 10 means that when you get into those big ward wars with an enemy support who's really going for it, um, you guys will run out of sentries if you really commit. You can't buy a million sentries. Also, you can't have the people just buying a million sentries because they want to feed, but they'll just buy something else. So I don't think that will change that much. Um, they'll buy salves or whatever. But, um, but this makes the ward war a little bit more intelligent. And I want to say that this should... This is the time right now to buy stock in gem, right? Buy, 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 guys, on the gem. Gem is so hot right now. Uh, for sure. Buy, 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 guys. And also against Invis heroes. I mean, if you're playing against a uh, Ricky or Slark and the Ricky or Slark has a gem, then it's gonna be very hard for you to keep sentries down everywhere because they will, you know, be able to get rid of them quickly. That's scary. So I, I like the entire shift to the in the sentry game here. It's a pretty big change, even though it's such a short line of text, but it has a big impact. The tome, the initial 10 minute stock now provides two tomes. It has a five minute cooldown of use. So you could either double use it on the same hero, but obviously I think most times you just give this to uh, your position four so he gets level six and give the other one to your position five so that they don't get completely behind. Um, but it's really nice. So it has a five minute cooldown, so you can't just double pump it into the same hero, which is great. Um, I like the idea of this. So I have Scotty has a weird change here as well. Slow duration is changed from five and two and a half seconds for a melee and range um, to three seconds. So it's always three seconds uh, slow, no matter if you're melee or range. And the slow amount is reduced from 35 to 20 against melee heroes. And it's increased to 45 against ranged heroes. And the attack speed slow matches the movement slow. So Scotty has a massive difference in how good it is against ranged or melee heroes. If you play against a ranged hero like Shadowfiend and you hit him with Eye of Scotty, that's a 45% slow on movement and attack speed. Whereas if you hit a lifestealer, he's gonna shrug it off pretty well. So this is a really big thing, I think. Um, very big nerf on Scotty against melee heroes, but a pretty big buff against ranged heroes as well. So um, yeah, interesting to note. I like the Dominator not having 300 gold recipe costs. I think that item was a little bit too good. HP region is down on uh, Pipe of Insights, and HP region is down on the mech and on the Greaves. Just lower HP region values all over. Movement speed. Also the threshold armor bonus is down by 5. Yeah, Greaves are being bought a little bit too much, so a reasonable nerf, I think. Mask of Madness uh, is slightly buffed by 5 more movement speed. Rod of Atus, uh strength and agility reduced from 12 to 10. 2, two strength, 2 agi gone. We saw a lot of Rod of Atus as well, a lot of drums, a lot of lads. I mean, they're just nerfing items that we that we see bought a lot. The Greaves, the Dominator, uh, the Pipe, the Atos, the Drums, Vladimir's. We see all these items, Wraith, Band, Spams. Um, but they also buffed the Mask Commanders, which I really like. So they're not just nerfing the strong items, they're also buffing some other stuff. Um, they changed the Bloodstone, so you can't stack Bloodstone some Storm anymore, which is really sad, because I loved playing that. But at the same time, it's the right move. <laughs> um, you can buy multiple, but it's just not going to be worth it anymore. Nowhere near the same effect. So now we get to a good part. The hero changes. Just going to take a breath and see what you guys are saying here before we get into this. Uh, will this patch talk be on YouTube? Yeah, I'll upload it uh, afterwards. <laughs> stop, deal stop stealing my tomes. Everyone gets a tome now. And also everyone gets a Scotty. Or gets Scotty. Gets an Aghanims. Alright, let's see what happens here. Reworked the Scepter upgrade. While, bur while borrowed time is active, any time an ally takes more than 525 damage, which makes me think, in one instance or like total, uh, while within 1600 range of Abaddon, an individual mist coil will automatically fire towards that ally. Scepter still increases duration by one. So they say that this is the rework does this mean that we no longer have the previous? Because it, it says that we still have the one second extra duration. But we don't have the damage being channeled to Abaddon anymore, I suppose. So, this honestly feels like a worse Aghanims to me. 
to me. I mean, the old Aghanims was insanely good in some in some scenarios. Like, so useful. Uh, you couldn't get bursted. If you had Abaddon next to you with Aghanims, he could protect you. Uh, also, the AoE of 1600 is fucking massive. That is huge. That is such a big range. 1600 is insanely big from Abaddon. So he covers a massive area. Um, but... I suppose that he doesn't pay the HP cost of the Mist Coil, or the mana costs, um, which is kind of neat. But the big question for me here is, this 525 one instance, or is it just any time they take 525 total? Is it like a um, Kraken Shell, I suppose? Which I will find out um, right now. Let's try it now. Fuck it. I'm too curious. I need to know it. Because, I, I mean, if it's only 525 damage in um, in a single instance, then it's really bad. But if it's over... If it's in general, then I guess it's fine. Um, okay, we're just gonna have these two be our friends. And we're gonna level up Axe. A little bit like that. And level bots, 25. We're gonna buy Aghanims. You're gonna buy some parts. Okay, so if he attacks you now, wait. Oh wait, we have skilled it. Okay. And I did buy it. Wow. So it's only when you take five twenty-five in a single. Huh. Yeah, he's he's straight up murdering my lich and it does nothing. Okay, so it's completely. Is it only when it's active? Oh, it's only when it's active. Right. Of course. Come, come here, my lich. Oh yeah, let's try again. I mean, it feels... Yeah? Okay, so it, it does work even if it's uh, lower damage. Instances. I don't know. I still feel like this is garbage compared to the old one. I'm gonna be honest here. Yeah, you can take the heal talent to get more heal out of it. Um, hmm, you do have the AoE mist coils though. I suppose that's what's gonna make it cool, right? Does that not work? It's an AoE mist coil, doesn't it? Wait, let me see here. Okay, so it's a non-AoE mist coil. All right, well, it's garbage. We're done here. This is shit. The only reason I thought that this could maybe be good uh, is also nice text. Um, the only reason I thought it maybe could be good is if the AoE worked. Um, yeah. As you see here, the AoE works properly when I cast it like this. But it doesn't work properly when we do this. Yeah, okay. That might be buffed. Um... That might be buffed, but we'll see. Is the threshold before or after reductions? Good thing to test, I suppose. Let's see. After reductions. So that also makes it weaker than if it was pre-reductions. Pre-reductions would be pretty damn strong. Yeah, the old Aghanims on Abaddon, a hundred times better, if you ask me. Like, way better. The old Aghanims could be game-winning, whereas this one, I think, is just uh, fancy garbage. Um, so sorry, Abaddon players. I expect this to be buffed, though, and make it so that the Mist Coil is actually AoE. I hope that they fix that interaction, um, but still. Uh, no, I want to read patches, sorry. Mist Coil cast range is reduced by 300, as if he needed more nerfs, like, the Aghanim is already shit, now this is also shit, and level 15 talent is also nerfed, like, the fuck? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I get it that Puppy has been hiding and healing people, you know, and Abaddon has looked really, really good, and he has been pretty good, but... Come on, man. Come on, bro, you can't give him three nerfs in a row, he wasn't that strong. He did get some attack speed, I guess. That's always something. Um, alright, let's keep moving, let's keep moving. Alchemist, added scepter upgrade. With scepter equipped or synthesized, you gain a bonus 30 damage and 
6% spell amp for each scepter that you gave allies at any point in the game. This prompts a question to me that I don't really know. Can you give Ag uh, Aghanims to Arc Warden's clone? I don't think you can give it to the... I don't think you can give it to the Meepo clones, but... Can you give it to Arc Warden? I just wanna, I just wanna see. Because that would be one more potential clone to give away. Um, I'm just gonna, just gonna do this right here, you know, real quick. Yes. The fuck? Not yet. I'm not trying to. Yeah. Okay, you can't. Good to know. Good to know. Also, I think that adds a lot of late game to alchemists. Where alchemists previously. Here's the thing with Alchemist late game. It's very hard to build damage items, because you need to build so much survivability. You know, you see the Shivas, the Salt Curas, the Abyssal Blades, the... You know, you have a lot of other items, but you don't really have those Daedalus... You know, maybe a Mjolnir, but you don't really have those damage items. Even rarely you see something like a Monkey King bar, but Daedalus pretty much never. Divine Rapier, not an option. Uh, you know, Desolator, not something you buy. You just don't really buy damage items, but you have the best attack speed in the game. So getting damage in a way that doesn't take up your inventory slots is really nice. It works for himself too, is what chat is saying. So yeah, you can get 150 then. 150 extra damage is pretty big. And the spell amp is pretty cool too. 30 extra spell amp. Legas, thank you for your 9 months, dude. Thank you for the resub. Very cool change to Alchemist. I like it. Um, Ice Vortex mana cost is uh, reduced from 50, blah, blah, blah. All right. Ice Blast can no longer be seen on minimap by enemies if they have True Sight. Massive AA buff and a very nice quality of life for any AA player. I mean, it's just so hard to land this otherwise. And now it's going to be much more scary to play against uh, Ancient Apparition. Um, Antimage with one of the weirdest Aghanim Scepters. Added Scepter upgrade. Mana Void kills now add plus 70 seconds to the highest cooldown ability on the enemy hero. Cooldowns start... Cooldown starts once the enemy respawns. Increases the stun duration by one second if the target dies during this period. Uh, it is still counted as a Mana Void kill. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. 72 second quill, quill spray cooldown. Yeah, I mean, you can find some funny stuff, but even even against long CD spells, that's gonna be super annoying. I mean, yeah, short CD spells, you could you could really just make Bristleback a piece of shit when he respawns, that's for sure. But, I mean, do that against some, some Void Chronosphere or Tidehunter Ravage, that's gonna suck, you know? Yeah, or Meta. I wonder, I guess it's the longest cooldown that they have currently ticking, right? It has to be on cooldown for it to have the the 70 extra. So yeah, you could you could do it on like a Queen of Pain, and if she didn't use ulti or had cooldown on her other spells, which I guess is pretty much never, but if she only had cooldown on blink, then she would have a 70 second cooldown blink. Um, wow, that's really, really interesting, uh, Scepter. Still very hard to... Um, Still very hard to use. No, it doesn't work like that. Oh, it's it's always... Uh, Alright, we'll test it then. To the lab. Highest I cooldown ability. Doesn't sound like the ability on longest cooldown. Oh. Yeah, I guess I guess it just adds cooldown no matter if the ability is used or not then. Uh, Alright, let's I'll see here. Down. Level ball, it's 25. Level up your skills. Okay, so give me, an, give me an Aghanims, and we have to kill them during the duration, right? So, here we go. I'm gonna give you a tap. Don't worry. And we need to level up. So what do you have that's on long cooldown now? I don't think I can see that, but... Okay, it's not on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can see it already. Ulti is on cooldown. Huh! Ulti on cooldown, boys. Yes. That's funny, dude. So even if they didn't use the ability, she doesn't have ulti for, you know, over a minute. Oh, so it's yes. always on the longest CD. That's kind of nice. You know which one it's going to be, too. Oh my god, that's so cool.
it doesn't work with the level 25 talent for longer um for lower cooldown mana voids you can only have the effect on one enemy at the time it gives them the debuff and you have a buff to track it hmm i see that's kind of cool i like the idea of it but still you have to buy agonims i guess this is a 2b item because I don't really see myself as a carry antimage ever wanting to buy this, but Tubi will buy it, you know, so there's there's that. Probably the only player in the world who will actually have it be useful. Um, Arc Warden, turn rate has been improved by 0 0.1, fixed Tempest, uh, Tempest double. Yeah, true, you can eat it in late game. You can eat it in late game, that's true. Very nice to gear cap harder. Uh, better turn rate, fixed Tempest Double being unable to activate runes, very nice. Added Scepter upgrade, grants a new ability, Rune Forge, creates a random rune in front of you. Cooldown 60 seconds, the selection of runes include bounty runes and power-up runes. Holy shit. I mean, I'm definitely buying Aghanims on Arkworn. It's like an extra Midas. But not just that, it's like, what if you have Midas on Arkworn and then buy Aghanims at some point? And you just spawn like an arcane rune. Suddenly, it, it's gonna pay for itself, sort of, you know? Like, it's gonna make you able to do more shit. Spawn a regen rune? Oh, I don't have to go to base. I'll just stay here. Um, You don't pick what rune? Yeah, I know, it's random. But still, every 60 seconds, and you can do it with both your hero and your clone. I mean... I mean... <laughs> you're just a rune factory. You're just a rune factory. Uh, extra attack speed and lower cooldown on the wraiths. Oh my god. Even lower. That's really big. Base damage increased by 3. Base armor increased by 1. Reworked the scepter. Now causes battle hunger to be a 400 AOE target ability. Debuff still reduces the enemy damage by 30%. Battle hunger now gives half the speed when used on creeps. Ooh. So you can put it on an entire creep wave and you get pretty fast. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I guess they're trying to make the scepter a thing on Axe. I like the armor and the damage, though. Uh, that's neat. They need to buff Axe now that he has his, uh, you know, manly immortal being released. Or Arcana. Let's be real, it's an Arcana. Um, Brain Sap. Brain Sap Scepter now also reduces the cast point by 50%. Yeah, because Aghanims was pretty hard to use otherwise. Uh, Feeble. More attack speed reduction, okay. Firefly, cooldown is higher on low levels. Yeah, Batrider has been used quite a bit. Better Aghanims. I like how they're buffing Aghanims on everyone. Even if they're not really remaking it, it's just sl minor buffs to Aghanims. 50 more search radius, okay, it's kind of cool. Beastmaster, reworked Scepter upgrade. Wild Axes have no cooldown. No cooldown. And can be used again once they have returned the Beastmaster. Excuse me, I'm gonna have to go into the uh, the laboratory, yeah? So you mean to tell me your master. that it has no cooldown? Wait, wait, not free spells, because then we have to think. Really is max level? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Wild Axe is damage, we need that. That's one life spent. Give me the Aghanims. Here we go. Ah, now we're gonna try it again. Scepter. On this guy, with a little bit of tankiness. Mm. Ah, cut him down. Cut him down. They're gonna get stronger and stronger. Every time they hit you, they hit stronger. It's like Ursa. They're getting there. I mean, this guy's three, three hearts, boys. And it only took us like 15 seconds of doing nothing but standing there. Very useful. Yeah, we're ranged Ursa, basically. So does this mean... How fast are they if you're right next to them? They're not faster, right? They're a little bit faster. You can't, like, super fast cast them, though, can you? There's no way to do it. You can't double tap them. This is the minimum distance they travel. I mean, it's weird as fuck. Especially on a hero who has, like, an attack speed aura, so he wants to be auto-attacking, but I guess you can... I guess you can, like, throw out the axe, get two... Okay, get one auto-attack in, and then... Okay, I see it. I can... I can work with this. 
All right. Next. <laughs> Truth compels me. Yeah. It does increase your boar and necros damage. That's the scary part. Yeah, I know. It's the damage from everything everything beastmaster, so to say. Everything that you control. Um am amplifies the subsequent damage from beastmaster and his units. So for sure, when you get hit a few times by that, you're gonna take tremendous damage from things. I could even imagine some E Blade Dagon uh, you know, build on my Beastmaster. You just like axes someone, then roar them, and then axe again, and then E-Blade, axe again, which mm, probably not like that because it's physical damage. Uh, okay, not like that. Just axe twice and then E-Blade Dagon, that, that's it. You can clear all the trees, for sure. Wild access damage uh, to do was moved to level 20 talents, and yeah, some stuff moved around. He did get the boar attack damage on level 15 now, which is really big, I want to say. That's really strong. Bloodseeker, agi is reduced, blood rights, uh, mana cost is reduced on lower levels. Wow, very nice. Rupture is now lethal again. Come on, Ice Frog, don't do this to us. <laughs> is it lethal or is it not? I don't know if I should run or if I should stay. Come on, Ice Frog. I don't even know what to do. Alright, so it's lethal again. Deals 30, 45, and 60% of the distance moved as damage. Sounds terrifying. Yeah, it's the face boots treads all over again, man. Yonata damage uh, reduced by a little bit, just 10 per level. Shuriken, or 10 on every level. Shuriken Toss uh, Scepter now also increases the cast range from 400 to 800. So the Aghanim's build is buffed here as well. And the Scepter uh, will play nicely into the fact that he buffed the Shuriken Toss damage talent. They really want to make Aghanim's just happen on every hero. Th that, that's what they want to do, which is hilarious to me. Um, in all honesty though, having 800 range on this instead of 400 is a massive deal. Because if you're getting up to cast your Shuriken Toss, you're getting very close with a spellcasting bounty onto before, and you could easily get caught out of position. But 800 range is very long, especially with the Ethan Lens on top of that. Let's keep going. Thunderclap damage is uh, reduced by, uh, by 10, 15, and 20, but then it's the same on max level. More of a power spike on max level. Primal Split Scepter now also grants the Brulings plus 100 movement speed. Huh. 100 movement speed, you say? That fucking Earth Panda is gonna be hard to run down now. Also, is this the first time they officially call them Brulings? I don't know. I think they've called them that before. That Earth Panda is even gonna start running now, dude. Hmm. Interesting stuff. Base armor increased by 1 on Bristleback. Warpath damage per stack is increased from 18, 24, 30 to 22. So 4 more on the first level. Yeah, 4 more on every level. Okay. And the goo AoE slightly increased. Still think Scepter on Bristleback is pretty garbage, but Warpath buff is interesting. And 1 armor is, I mean, oof, unkillable. Broodmother. Base attack time is increased by 25, as we saw earlier. Added Scepter. Increases spin web, max count, stay with me, Ar arachnophobiacs, stay with me, from 8 to 20, 20 webs, movement speed bonus from 70 to 100%, and, we're not done, removes movement speed limit. The fuck? I need to test this. I, I cannot. I cannot not test this. All right. So assume that you play against the broodmother, and she's like, "Nom, I want to eat this thing," but instead I'm high fiving because I don't know. I'm a. Prepare for battle. Oh wait, can you? Oh, you have to buy. Wait, do you have to buy it as a consumable? All oh, right, because you have to add the recipe. Where's the recipe? There it is. Oh, it auto consumes when you do. Okay. Very nice. So, imagine you play against this broodmother and she's just, you know, 
running around doing her own thing. And at some point, she has 657 movement speed. Yum. Also, don't worry. She'll be out of her web soon. Soon. She won't be in her webs forever, right? It's not like the entire map will be covered in webs. Yum. Yeah, yeah, this, this is clearly, clearly what everyone wants. All right. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. She won't be that fast though. She won't like just run at people, right? She won't just zoom around like a blood seeker. That's not what's gonna happen. Fortunately, no one would buy Mask of Madness and outrun the tower hits. Yeah. Yeah, this is... This is what everyone wants to experience. Just, uh... Just my race car brood mother right here. Okay, that's interesting. My brood case opens. But wait, we're not done yet, guys. I mean, we're done with Broodmother. Arachnophobiax, you can breathe now. Um, but we're not done. This is not the craziest shit of the patch. We continue. Base armor increased by one on Centaur. All right, one more guy who can't die. Plus 10 on his retaliate damage. All right, all right. Strength gain is reduced on CK. The Chaos Bolt minimum damage is increased from 60 uh, to 150 to 90 to 150. Okay. Maximum damage from 180 um, to 270 to 180 to 300. So buff overall. Buff overall to the Chaos Bolts in damage. Pretty nice buff too. Um, Chaos Bolt minimum stun from 1 uh, to 2 to 1.25 to 2. And maximum stun from 2... Four to two point two point two point two two four. All right, so overall just buffs, buffs all around for a chaos bolt, and the cooldown is increased. Here we go, finally some nerf, uh, from ten to thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten. Wow, wow, we very interesting, very interesting. I mean, it's not a massive change to a chaos bolt, but it's still pretty good. Here's the big thing for chaos knight though. Phantom Scepter now also reduces the incoming illusion damage from 260 to 180%. This Aghanims is really good. It's really good. And you can use it, you know, you can play... If you're a support uh, CK, it's super good. But if you're a core CK, I think you still buy that. And especially with the fact that we can eat the Aghanims in later stages. This just makes uh, CK's gear cap even more scary. Well, wow. yeah, I, I think that's a very, very terrifying Aghanims. I think Aghanims could be a core item pretty early on for CK with this. Like, probably Power Treads, Power Treads Midas, Armlets, maybe the Heart and then the Aghanims, something like that. I, I still like the, the Power Treads Midas uh, Armlet Heart build, but I like to fit, fit the Aghanims in somewhere, probably after the Heart. Alright, Snith. Uh, Snith... Snith now has Holy Persuasion, uh, provides plus 10, plus 15, plus 20, plus 25 percent chance that someone thinks Snith will do something. No, sorry. Uh, bonus movement speed to converted creeps. Uh, Divine Favor is now Passive Aura, provides 1, 2, 3, 4 HP regen, 8, 12, 16, 20 percent heal amplification, and 4, 8, 12, 16 bonus damage for heroes. Your creeps get 2x the values. All right. So your creeps will have 8 HP regen and amplify their heal by 40% and have 32 damage increase. All right. Kind of cool, I guess. Um, but you can't take over siege creeps anymore. They stopped you from being able to take over siege creeps. I specifically remember this. So that means that I don't fucking know what a Snith is supposed to do. But then you have this, at least. You have 
Level 15 talent change from minus 10, minus 7 divine favor cooldown to plus 10 divine favor damage. So, you will have 52 damage increase, because it's doubling. 52 damage increase for your creeps. So if you find some creeps with high attack speed, you know, uh, maybe get the, um, the Thunderhide uh, active ability on them as well, or some shit like that, I don't know. Could maybe um, be a thing. Yeah. Smith has gained 9% win rate since the patch. I mean, Chen. Then again, he was pretty dead before, so... I suppose this is uh, gonna end up being being pretty big. His pushing power sounds pretty good with 52 damage for his entire pack. Sounds interesting. Alright, let's keep going. I'm not gonna scroll past, actually. I'm gonna keep scrolling like this so you guys don't read ahead here. You bastards read ahead. Um... Clinks now has 0 0.25 base mana region. We already saw that. Added Aghanim Scepter creates two skeletons near Clinks when exiting Skeleton Walk. Increases... I mean, that's so cool. Uh, increases Skeleton Walk speed by 30% and unlocks max movement speed. Oh god, it's Broodmother all over again. Burning Army. Base attack time has been... Uh, nerfed? Not really. Buffed as well. Huh. Base attack time changed from 1.75, 1.6, 1.45. So it's actually stronger on lower levels, but weaker on higher levels than before. Burning army units uh, damage taken. Burning army units damage from 100% of your base damage to 80, 100, 120. Okay, so there's the compensation. So your level 1 ulti is still roughly the same, I think. Because it has less damage, but it has faster attack speed. It's probably slightly weaker now. Um, but then it goes up to be 120% of your base damage. Wow. Burning army units. I guess the two skeletons near us also count as burning army units, I would assume. In terms of their um, base attack time and damage. I could only assume that they're going to get stronger when you get level 3 ulti and so on. <laughs> hmm. Texas All behind right. Cam Skeptical. Uh, whatever, whatever. There we go. There we go. Fixed. Thank you, Gene Guy. Um, that's pretty cool. I really like the idea. So here's the thing, though. Clinks, if we have a quick little look-see here at Clinks. Clinks has a cooldown of 17 seconds on Skeleton Walk. Skeleton Walk has a 35 second duration. This means that if we have Aghanims, we can come out and be like, Hey, I'm Mr. Spooky Skeleton, and then go into this again, and then you come out and like, Hey, I'm Mr. Spooky Skeleton, and you have four of them. Is what I assume will happen here. So, if I sneak around here, pretend I've been in this for a long time, and then pop out, and then pop out. Look at those guys! Look at them! Four of them! Oh, oh yes, and then more of them! Oh, dude. I need my refresher. I need my refresher Aghanim's build now. I already built refresher on Clinks. I can only imagine sneaking up on someone like this. Imagine. Imagine some fools just standing around. Level up enemies a few times so they take less damage. And then you just pop out of this. Oh my god, so many skeletons. Oh my god. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. It's so beautiful. Yeah, that's that's awesome. You can also soul kill anyone in the game with Orchid, Nullfire, and Aghanims, even if they have like 8k HP. Yeah, but Clinks could already pretty much soul kill anyone in the game if he had Orchid and Nullfire. I mean, that's already strong. I don't think... You do get, you know, four extra skeletons with that, but... But you also need to get the Aghanims, which could have been, you know, Solar Crest or Desolator or whatever. Um, Alright, let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Very interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. Um, clockwork base armor increased by one. All right, one more immortal man. Crystal Maiden, better attack point, and better attack speed. So, 
I'm taking Crystal Maiden mid. Darkseer strength gain is, or strength is reduced from 24 to 21. Three less strength on level one. Um, plus some 100 iron shell damage now instead on level 20 and 10 armor. And the AoE surge is moved down to be a level 25 talent. Makes sense. Makes sense, I think. I think the AoE search was too early to get on level 20. Don't have too much interesting to say about that, but, you know, some general nerfs. Along with the Helm of Dominator nerf, I think Darkseer is a bit weaker now. Man, I need to go faster here. Added Scepter upgrade, attacking no longer takes you out of Shadow Realm. Each attack still has bonus damage based on the duration of the buff. That's insane. That's insane. With level 25, you have the 200 attack speed talent. You take... Uh, you know, if you get Dragonlance or some shit as well, go carry Willow. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. This is, this is some scary stuff. That W is actually gonna be so insane. I, I actually have to test it. I said I was gonna go faster, but there's no way I'm not testing this. Time to take what I want. Oh yeah, I, I, was, I was just thinking about my voice more, more so than anything else. I'll lose my voice before I'm done reading this shit. Alright, so let's, uh, you know, hypothetically say that we're Willow here, and we have acquired some items. I don't know, something like this. This is my typical Willow build, anyway. And then we have a dummy target here. Now, I'm going Invis. The fuck? Eh, this place was boring anyway. That damage, dude. And that's before I even picked my talents. No time to dilly -dally. Let's see now. Let's see now. What do you say we go introduce ourselves? 10,000 damage in the span of that time. 10,000 damage in the span of that time. Look here. I can't do that. Look at this fucking shit. I disappear. Ten thousand damage in that span of time. I only have a Mjolnir and a Daedalus. My other items are not even damage. Let's oh my god, steal. dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ten thousand damage is not that much. Death comes. Okay. It's not wise to stand in my way. <laughs> only. Daedalus, Mjolnir, Dragonlance, face boots. I mean, that's not that much items to be... I mean, here's the thing. If you play Core Willow and you get level 25, you will have more items than that. You will for sure have more items than that. Especially because Core Willow has a level 1520 GPM talent. You realize that you can have pretty much three more damage items than I had in that game. Y you could do insane damage. But, okay. So, speaking of that... 120 GPM instead of the 90. Big buff. Pretty big, I think. Uh, and of course they removed the Shadow Realm talents because it would be insane. It's already insane. Minus 12 second Brabble Mace cooldown. It's pretty neat. Pretty neat. I like it. Telegrave Scepter Radius increased from 450 to 500. And ladies and gentlemen, here we have the winner of the most boring change of this patch so far. Dazzle players rejoice. You now have... 50 more AoE on your Aghanim Scepter Grave. Because that is truly what was holding me back from buying Aghanims on Dazzle. That's, uh... That, that, that is, for sure, the worst change I've read so far. Okay, let's see. Added Scepter upgrade. Anytime an enemy is affected by your spells, Crypt Swarm... Uh, Crypt Swarm Impact, Silence Debuff, or Spirit Siphon Target. Or when you attack an enemy, a ghost will fly out, hit the enemy for double the usual damage, and then return to you with life. These ghosts apply 100% slow for 0 0.3 seconds. Excuse me, when you attack an enemy, 100% slow, 0 0.3 seconds. Hmm, if I can get my attack speed to be every 0 0.3 seconds... Then that means I have 100% slow on the enemy all the time. Hmm. 
Crips form cast point has been reduced. All right, I, I have to test this. I, I can't. I can't not test it. I know it's delayed because the ghost has to get to the enemy, but still, still, it's so spooky sounding. All right, I need to see someone. Someone just low. Let's just give him some hearts. Actually, easier way to do this. And level max. Yeah, it's not like I have my ulti active, but it kind of looks like I do. Oh, it works on buildings. I don't see anything wrong with that. The fuck are they doing? You're not supposed to dance around him. Kill him. Now, <laughs> what? <laughs> now they hit him. Okay. Uh, side note: ghosts may not be the most reliable servants. Um. All right. Note to self: hire more trustworthy ghosts. Yeah, the birds. Birds are not very smart. Um, pretty interesting. I think that's a very interesting thing. I only tried the attack here, but I mean, you don't have to go for an attack build. I was just illustrating the point that you can spawn them on attack is really, really um, crazy to me. But of course, I think you can still build a very standard DPS or a standard uh, like tanky DP and still have good DPS by just casting your spells. Uh, and also, I didn't even use my ulti there, but it kind of looked like I did. And the fact that it works on towers and buildings, just attacking them and sending a ghost, that is insane to me. So let's keep going. Disruptor, he got... Well, okay. I mean, it's a contender for Dazzle. Still better than Dazzle. Um, but it's, it's a contender for how boring it is. It's uh, not as boring as Dazzle. But it's something. Uh, I'm not even gonna read it. Devour now has a creep limit level. Uh, <coughs> creep I was level limit. to catch your reaction to TA, but I gotta go. Have a good one, sir. See you, bad experiment. Thank you for the 63 month resub. Take care, dude. Devour now has a level limit, same as Chen, and the cleave has been increased to sub 175. <laughs> what the fuck, man? They really want us to just cleave with Doom. I don't get it. Why? <laughs> Why? 175% cleave is a lot, though. I will say that. I mean, so is 130, but what the fuck? At what point is it enough that we start building DPS Doom? Added Scepter. I think just don't build DPS Doom this patch, guys. If we just hold on, I bet we can get a better deal out of Ice Frog. This is like negotiations, right? 175 is not an even number. I think 200. We'll give him the silent treatment on this one. I think he's gonna come around. He wait a few weeks, you know, because he really wants it. Uh, and I think he will come around to nice and even two hundred. And that's when we say, yeah, two twenty-five. You know, we pull it up a bit more. Um, and that's that's how we're gonna get it. And we end up with two fifty. Uh, added scepter upgrade adds a fourth level to the elder dragon form, a black dragon. Gaining Scepter increases the level of your ultimate by one. Black Dragon has 50% more corrosive damage. 50% uh, more corrosive damage, splash damage, and slow amounts. It also increases your attack range to 600 and grants you 30% magic resistance. The fuck? Magic resistance on DK sounds absolutely amazing. So... I accidentally clicked, I'm sorry. Whenever you click here, it just sends you somewhere. God knows where. Oh yeah, 30% magic resistance on DK sounds absolutely terrifying, considering how tanky he is already. And um, yeah, that sounds really powerful. That's so cool, I love it. I also wanna see what it looks like. I suppose black and dragony, but still. Um, Draw Ranger has been nerfed, very good. I think uh, mark marksmanship no longer insta-kills the ancients. Uh, and marksmanship only pierces uh, base armor, not total armor. Pretty big nerfs to draw for sure. I think that's what he needed. 
Uh, rework Deceptor Upgrade. Echo Stomper now causes uh, you to become spell immune while channeling <coughs> and for two additional seconds perfected enemy hero. Wow. Yeah, again, Echo Stomp on Meeple and then you're just good. Nah, I'm not gonna test the dragon now. Fuck it. I want to test everything. I want to get done with this so I can play, play some Dota as well. Uh, that sounds pretty good. Sounds uh, really strong actually. Ember Spirits added Scepter Upgrade Fire Remnant cast range is three times longer and initial Remnant movement speed is two times faster. Maximum number of charges increased from three to five and activate Fire Remnant cost no mana. Jesus Christ, dude. I want to see, see mid one play Ember is what I want. Mid one, I know you're out there. Probably not watching my stream. Probably gonna flame me when I see you in a pub again, because you're always so rude. But, uh, you know, I want to see this. Because mid one's, mid one's Ember, when it comes to the remnant usage, mid one is the craziest one that I've seen, like, uh, when it comes to a level 25 talent. And I would love watching him play this. There are a lot of good Ember players, though, and I'm sure it will be fun watching a lot of them. Uh, strength gain from 2.1 to 2.4, uh, level 10 talent from uh, 10 strength to 12, 15 talent from minus 1 to minus 1.5. It's minor buffs to void, not that exciting ones. Minor buffs, hmm. Can't say too much. I I'm not sure that void is going to be so strong with this. Now Grimstroke though. <coughs> Grimstroke, added scepter upgrade, grants you a new ability, Dark Portraits. Creates an ink illusion of target enemy hero. Illusion lasts 20 seconds and is magic immune with 30% movement speed increase uh, and takes 200% incoming damage and deals 150% outgoing damage. Excuse me? Cooldown is 35 and mana cost 200. And you can ink swell it because ink swell is now castable on allied spell immune units. So if you bind the enemy, I mean this one, this one I gotta test. There, there's no, there, there's no way we don't do. We need to. I need to see this shit. Dude. I mean, okay. Let, let's just have my my favorite carry heroes here. Yeah. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Enemy. Okay. Hello, guys. You guys have been farming really well, I think. So, give what's item? Uh, yes, they've been they've been farming well. They've been, uh, you know, they have a heart. Okay, they also have a Scotty. Okay, they also have a. Um, uh, is it Buritza? How the fuck do you get crit? All right, whatever. You haven't been farming that well. Okay, that's how well you've been farming. Fuck it. I don't know how the bird say is uh, given. Bow before me. All right, they farmed well. They need to level up. Very good. And then uh, we just uh, do this. This. Oh, they're doing absolutely no damage. Because they need MKB now. <laughs> All right, we'll give them the MKB. I gave them too much evasion. That's funny, dude. Well, Jesus, the duration on them, though. They last forever. I mean, but you don't have to use them to kill those heroes. You can just run away. Starting 20 rich. second duration. First Meanwhile, PL killed PL. What else is new? Torrents to come now. The PLT doesn't proc ulti, uh, doesn't it? If I, I paint, my I mean, I didn't skill it. I think he does. So yeah, he does, dude. Yeah, I created very tanky carries here, but the damage is pretty impressive, I think. 
What is the interaction of Tiny's tree ball and nature prophet sprout? Ironwood branch and Trent protector tree respawn in Time Town. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, holy shit. When I maxed the Agion morph, he insta died. Uh, I don't know exactly, but we haven't gone there, Syracuse. You have to calm down. You're ahead of time. We haven't gone there. Thank you for donating. But we're, we're gonna keep going here in the time we have. Gyrocopter. Base attack time is increased by 25. Huskar plus one armor and more regen and less cooldown on inner fire. Sounds like an asshole. That's it. Base damage by invoker is increased, but his exhort gives less damage, so it's a buff to cost wax mainly. Mm, Chaos Meteor and more damage and electric. Uh, nothing too exciting. Wisp is in captain's mode, and he also has an Aghanim Scepter. Spirits now passively spawn around you constantly every second. Max of five spirits given at a time. What the fuck? Um, tether pull cannot be interrupted if stunned during it, like Timber Chain. Very nice. That's insane. Liquid fire ability effect still impacts the area when uh, when the target dies or the attack is evaded. Okay, so you can't dodge that. Scepter now also causes the Illuminates to not require channeling. Which is it, Ice Rog? Make up your mind! Make up your mind, man! You can't play with my emotions like this. This is the face boots power treads thing all over again, man. All over again. Chakra now can be cast on enemies, placing a debuff that drains 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5%, percent, percent, uh, so very, very little, I guess, of current, <laughs> current mana per 100 units moved. Last 5 seconds, the last 5 seconds old version was a percent of max mana, not current. Hmm. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, I mean, it's nice that he has that. And he also has the blinding light, so he can push people around and, uh, and force them to lose mana. But it doesn't have a stun towards the end. So there's that. There's that. Uh, base armor increased by 1 on Legion. Mana region on Lich. Strength gain is increased on Lina. And turn rate is improved. Jesus. Keep buffing Lina's base stats, man. Lion can stack less damage now. F. F in chat for all the times that we want to stack damage. Um, strength. Strength game increased on Lone Druids. True form health bonus increased. Nothing exciting. Base damage increased on Luna by 4. That's quite a lot. And here we go. What I believe to be a useless fucking agonyms. Added scepter upgrade causes one of the three creep waves to include two wolves. You cannot control the wolves. But they are considered your units. These wolves have the same movement speed as lane creeps. That's it. It's good. It's free gold. Yeah, I don't know, man. We'll have to see on that one. They farm for you. It also farms for the enemy, dude. I don't know. I'm not convinced yet, but we'll see. The wolves are actually weaker than your own wolves? Are they? I would assume they just spawn based on your level of the wolves, right? Why would they be weaker? Outside of the fact that, you know, I'll that the radius of feral impulse. As I see fit. But I'm sure they're gonna be equally strong when you're next to them, right? Why would they be weaker wolves? Nah, that doesn't make sense. I guess we'll have to see that in an actual game, but they should be the same. Same stats. That sounds really garbage to me overall, though. I mean, you can play it in a split push type lineup and just uh, force the enemy. You can issue stop commands to the uncontrollable wolves. Hmm. Okay. Uh, starting strength increased by two on Magnus. Shockwave Scepter has been buffed. Mars added to Captain's Mode. Minus four damage, minus one armor. Added. Scepter upgrade, God's Rebuke cooldown is now on a 1.4 seconds during Arena of Blood. Reset the God's Rebuke cooldown when Arena of Blood is cast. Arena of Blood damage rescaled from 150 to 250 to 120 to 250. And the cast point is upped by 0 0.1 second. This will make it a lot harder. I should say sort of impossible uh, against a fast player to catch them when they have BKB or something ready. Um... But 
yeah, these are not massive nerfs. We're going to see Mars in competitive. I mean, it is minus one armor and minus four damage, but still, Mars is pretty damn strong as he is. And this Aghanims is honestly quite interesting. You can God Rebuke a lot, it sounds like, uh, which is insane. So I think we're going to see a lot of Mars in competitive. Um, I think that will happen. Or people just ban him, quite likely. Medusa agility gain is reduced by 3.9 to 3.6. Her talent on Mystic Snake Mana Steel is Lord. Meepo has more base damage, more strength on his talent, more damage on his talent, more evasion. Her attack point is increased, so worse attack point, but more attack speed. So it will probably feel pretty similar, attacking on level 1. Uh, the Starstorm Scepter upgrade trigger... I don't think Aghanim's Morana is a thing, though. Even if they buff this, I don't think it's a thing. Monkey King, added scepter upgrade, spawns a monkey soldier near you every 3.5 seconds. These soldiers last 12 seconds. Soldiers do not spawn if you are invisible or on trees. These soldiers can attack any targets. However, they will not attack buildings if you are not within 500 range of them. Holy shit, dude. That is a very, very interesting ulti or Aghanim's upgrade. I will test it. That sounds extremely powerful I've and obnoxious. I don't know. It sounds it sounds very good, to be honest. So does it spawn right next to me, or how does this work? Let's get a move on. How about when I push buildings then? Okay. They lock on to whatever they start attacking. He doesn't change target from the building to the creep wave. So if you spawn if you spawn um, a clone and it starts hitting the building, even if an enemy hero runs up next to it, it's still gonna push the building. As long as you're close to it, I guess. That also means that if it's attacking the building, it's not gonna attack you, so you can you can semi-safely jump the Monkey King. It's not gonna be that dangerous. Is there a logic to where they spawn? That guy spawned to the front and left of me. I don't know if there's a logic to this. Got it. They all seem to be going the same spot before, but... Mm, it seems kind of random. What hit them. It's supposed to be. They can't attack Roche. Yeah, for pushing, for Roche, I mean, just in general, just spawning Where those I things all the time, with. it sounds scary, man. It sounds scary to play against. Seems like a very, very strong uh, Aghanims to me. Uh, Morphling, Adaptive Strike, damage is reduced from 100 to 70 up to 100. Added Scepter, while morphed, you gain plus 35% cooldown reduction plus 50% mana cost reduction, and plus 600 cast range. Hold the fucking phone. All right, this is madness. Because there are things in Dota that with a 35% CDR or 600 range increase are absolutely bonkers. There are things that are crazy with the mana cost reduction. But even just think about something as simple as the Dragon Knight stun. Right? Just have Dragon Knights done with a 35% CDR and a 600 added range to it. Yeah, that's, you know, that'll be fun to play against. Imagine it with something like, oh, I don't know, Burl Strike? It's... Oh, I think Morphling we could test all day, so I'm not gonna test this now, because I could sit here and just test around different heroes forever. It sounds... It sounds really, really crazy. Um, thank you, Drone, for the three months, man. Ozfrog and D, dude. Jesus. No longer dispels your hero. Uh, base damage reduced by two. Nature's Call uh, attack damage is reduced. Same damage on max level, though. Okay, so a little bit lower damage on lane at start for uh, Furion. Um, morph also gains the Aghanim's effect of the hero he morphed into. Oh, that's true. Oh shit, that's... yeah. Oh my god, dude. Morphling is a big winner of this patch already. Maybe not like the strongest, but definitely one of the... one of the big winners. 
That's insane, dude. That's so insane. Uh, Reaper Scythe respawn time is increased. Or wait, not increased. Reduced. <laughs> okay, just straight up little nerf. That's it. Night Stalker, added scepter upgrade. Void is now applied in the 900 AoE around you. Increases the void mini stun from 0 0.1 to 0 0.6 and reduces the cooldown by 2. Jesus, man. Okay, I right clicked something. I'm sorry. I have to scroll down again. I shouldn't click anything. Why did I click something? I apologize. That sounds crazy, man. So you can actually farm with void now on Night Stalker. And in team fights, you're just mini stunning stuff over and over and slowing them. That sounds pretty good. I think Aghanims is a good farming tool here. It's like a mini Ravage. 0 0.6 seconds done. Very interesting. I wonder if it hits uh, Fog of War or not. Next, base strength increase or reduced by 1. Vendetta cooldown is rescaled to be longer on level 1. And level 15 talent is lowered movement speed. Okay. Multicast is now higher chance uh, and more damage on the on the fire blast sounds mm, very sexy. Guardian Angel Scepter now also provides 40 HP per second regen affects buildings still, so you can heal buildings. Not bad, not bad. This is the saddest part I've read so far. Base attack time increased from 1.4 to 1.7. Alright, which one of you fuckers was it? Who played a DPS oracle that Icefrog accidentally watched? Or worse yet, you guys played DPS oracle against Icefrog and made him nerf his BAT. Who the fuck decides to nerf his BAT, man? This is a meme! Why would you nerf a meme? God damn it. Thank you, Johnny Sniper, for the nine months. I can't believe they did this. This is so boring now. Uh, God damn it, man. <sighs> Will eat pants, thank you for five months. Best streaming location. Waga and Kitty in the same screen. Look at the <sighs> sleeping kitty. Yeah, she's pretty happy, dude. She's pretty happy. I think my brother was over here earlier, and I actually think he likes Gracie too, even though he hates cats. But I think he... He saw what we see. He's a pretty nice cat. Um, equilibrium on OD Equilibrium uh, now passively provides 11, 18, 25, 32 percent percent mana steal. Um, all damage, not just spells. Wow. When activated, triples the mana steal and slows enemies hit by your spells. That is a very big buff. Hmm. Don't mind me, just gonna eat some ravioli while we're reading here. But that's a pretty big buff to Odie. Pangolier added Scepter upgrade. Shield Crash now cast a two, two attack swashbuckle every 90 degrees around your hero. Lucky Shot no longer has a chance to silence, it now always disarms. I can't wait for the patch to Lucky Shot, it's just an auto attack. Lucky Shot is just like, it's, it's nothing special. There's nothing lucky about it, it's just a shot. Um, lucky shot now reduces armor by three, four, five, six. Pretty big that he reduces armor, and along with this, Aghanims could be pretty good. It could be pretty good. The 90 degrees are enough to cook your pasta. <laughs> Thank you, Pango. Um, added scepter upgrade on PA. Blur now has instant cast time and applies a dispel. Anytime you get a hero kill, your abilities are refreshed. Reduces blur cooldowns to 12 seconds. Hmm. The thing is, buying Aghanims on PA is not gonna happen. Like, you won't ever find yourself in a spot where you're like, yeah, I wanna spend 4,200 gold on an item that doesn't make me tankier. Or, I mean, not by much compared to BKB, right? Um, doesn't really give good survivability and also doesn't give me damage to kill the enemy with and then for it to be good it relies on you killing enemies it will be good for the 6 slot scenario though of eating an Aghanims but anything that's only good when you eat the Aghanims I tend to feel that it's not really a good Aghanims but sure in ultra late game 
It's a thing, but so is every single Aghanims in the game. I don't think this is very good. Yeah, 100% chance to get Aghanims from the 4th Roshan. Listen, if you're at the point that you get the 4th Roshan in the game, that's not- that's outside the norm. That's not normal games, you know? Most games don't go to that point. And yeah, every single hero in the game is good with a free Aghanims at this point, because everyone has some Aghanims. I just think that this is one of the worst ones. Hmm. So the strength gain is increased on PL and the gain is increased as well. Alright. Base attack or base strength is increased by 2 on Phoenix. Supernova now causes your abilities to refresh on cast rather than at the end of the spell. Okay, nice. So you can pre-click stuff. But not just that. Super, uh, Supernova, Super Scepter um, now also allows you to cast Sunray and turn its direction while in Supernova. So you're actually just, you know, cosplaying as my lamp when you play Phoenix. You're a Death Star. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. The Death Star. I approve. You approve it, Ikea Lamp. Very good. The Particle Cannon. That sounds pretty strong, though. That sounds pretty strong, because you still have the old, um, the old Scepter upgrade that you get extra hits to kill, and you can pick someone up, right? So, pretty damn good. More int gain, more strength gain. Nothing big to say about that. Mm, more intelligence on Pudge. We smart now. Very smart. Very smart. Ana region. Hmm. Netherward change is bigger than it looks, actually. You know, 0 0.2 more damage per... Uh, mana loss. Mana loss increase. Oh, no. It's just a mana loss. It's not the damage. Okay. Hmm. Well, it's still annoying. I thought it was the damage. Well, it's annoying, but it's not that good then. I have the storm no longer increases the attack rate uh, when you get Scepter. Scepter now hits two different units um, instead of one, and it still affects buildings. So if you take down the tier 3 tower, the racks are falling extremely fast, but even in team fights, hitting two different targets with the ulti on Razor, that's pretty strong. It can be. It's not that good for focus firing, of course, but I wouldn't want to stand next to Razor. That's pretty scary. That's pretty scary, dude. Ricky once again getting plus three base damage. Ricky has gotten some really good stat increases over the last, I don't know, six months or whatever. Like, Ricky is pretty damn good right now. Um, very interesting. But he has a lot of buffs in a row now on Ricky. Time for Ricky mid? I think so. I mean, I already pointed this out, like, the last three times that Ricky has been buffed. I've been like, guys, that's a lot of buffs in a row. And I think Ricky has reached that point where he's, he's gonna be pretty damn, pretty damn powerful. Agi gain is increased. And the uh, base Agi, wow. That's a lot of agility for Rubik. Holy crap. I mean, then again, it's agility for Rubik. But still nice. Uh, intelligence gain increased from 3.1 to 3.3. Shadowfina has some mana regen. More strength gain, more agi gain. Yada, not the most exciting. Eat the shock mana cost is rescaled. Base attack time or, or base attack speed on Lancers increased. Ancient, ancient seal cast range has increased a little bit. Concussive shot mana cost is lowered. Slardar, my boy. <laughs> Added Scepter Upgrade. Slithering Crush now creates a puddle of water. This is gonna be good. Uh, that is considered a river for bonuses. Provides plus 25 HP regen, plus 12 armor, plus 40% status resistance while in a puddle or in a river. God damn, I can't take this seriously. In addition to the normal Guardian Sprint River bonuses, the puddle... <laughs> The Puddle AoE is 550. Puddles last for 25 seconds. Can't believe someone fucking wrote this, dude. 
The Guardian Sprint now passively provides an extra 5, 20, 35, 50% movement speed bonus in the river with unlocked max speed rather than a fixed 700 speed at level 4 when activated. And the talent, instead of having a longer stun, it's a super short duration on the crush. So he can build his own river. Oh my god, dude. Puddle, puddle. Zero point- wait, 4.5 reduction. Did, did we do the math on this one, Valve? Because I feel like... Patrolling. I just have a, this, this, this feeling, like... Oh god. That's a pretty large thing. That's not a puddle, that's a fucking lake. Look to the foul. Yeah, but what what about if I take like the CDR and now I have a 2.625 second cooldown on my 1 second stun and 6 second Okay, we're just going to just going to make some Here we go. More more water. Water everywhere. And sprints. Oh my god. I don't even have boots. I'm pretty fast for not having boots. What if I just have power treads? Yes. Okay. 600. I'm not ready. So 600 movement speed with just that. What about if I want to stack status resistance? Because I apparently have that. So I go Sanchi Okay. 683 movement speed. I mean, look at that HP region and that armor. How do you kill a fish in the river? How do you beat a fish that's in the puddle? This is my puddle. Yeah, you're gonna have to nuke it, I think. We're going to need a bigger boat. Antares, thank you for 30 months. Thank you for the resub. Very interesting change for uh, Slardar. Very interesting change. I mean, that's done. That uptime on this leather ring crush is crazy. Dark base attack speed is increased by 20. Shadow Dance passive health region is uh, rescaled. The stronger on lower levels. Okay. And Shadow Dance Scepter range is increased by a hundred. Oh, the Scepter! Very good. Now Spectre. Added a Scepter upgrade. Grants you a new ability. Shadow Step. Allows you to perform a single target unit haunt. Cooldown is 70 seconds. Mana cost 180. Um, if you're playing support... And there's a Spectre... And she has like abyssal blade. You might want to run to your fountain and stay there, because as far as I understand, this is global. Hmm. Yeah, it seems good. Yeah, he needs vision to haunt, but I mean, dear lord, if you're out like on a warding mission as a support. Oh god. Don't play against Spectre. Ban Spectre. I love. Bitamundo, thank you for 61. Welcome back, my love. What a day to live with this patch. Smiling face with hearts. Smiling face with hearts. What a day to live, dude. Alright, let's let's keep going here. Thank you for the 61, Bitamundle. And I will see you soon at the training camp. Uh, base health region is increased by 0. Or from 0. 0.75 to 1.25. Bulldoze uh, surge resistance increased a little bit. Movement speed increased by a little bit. Greater bash stun duration is rescaled. Mm, okay. It's just worse on lower levels. It's Damage is rescaled to be a lot higher on lower levels. WHO says oh. Spectre. Also, Waga Senpai, please test mid chin cosplaying visage. It's insane. <laughs> We will see. We will see, dude. Thank you so much for the 322. I mean, it sounds it sounds interesting. 
Charge of Darkness, uh, mana cost is reduced. Ooh, only 70 mana cost on charge. Another yeah. strike, scepter, range, radius. Hmm. Not the most exciting. A lot of text, but not that exciting stuff about Spirit Breaker. Overall buffs, though. Oh, we're almost at TA. Now has one mana region. Techies, gonna be happy. Techie players are rejoicing all around. Now we get to the good stuff. Here we go. Added Scepter Upgrade grants you a new ability, Psionic Projection. Allows you to teleport to any psionic trap after a two second channel. Does not break melds. Cooldown 30 seconds. Mana cost 100. Detonates the trap on arrival. All right, so you're telling me that I can just be the global Psy Ninja and just In like... Of the temple. So my build is gonna be something like... It's gonna be something like this. And then instead of going blink, I'm gonna go for... Well, not a consumed, but pretend that you see an Aghanims here. There you go. Of the so... If I just have traps placed around the map... It's a trap. I can just like jump over here? I can jump over here? Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> I'm actually shivering a bit. I, I don't know. I, I'm gonna do stuff with this. I'm gonna do stuff with this today. Set. Set. Traps. I will need to get used to the fact that I that I have to press F to jump to it. Yeah, so it pops the trap when you get there, but you're still in this. And you can do it while you're in this. They don't see you breaking the meld. So you can actually meld Oh my god, I can double meld strike with it. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Do you see what I do? I just, like, go meld, wait a little bit, and when it's on two seconds, we start. There we go. We start, and then we land, and we attack someone, meld, attack someone. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, boy, man. Boy, boy, boy. Boy, boy, boy. This is, uh... Mm. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So you place two traps, explode one and uh, TP to the other. Mm, it explodes when you TP there. So, it, I mean, for assassinating someone, I'm gonna use the trap that I teleport to to kill them. So you don't even need to place two, you place one. But when you leave the lane, you need to make sure that you have traps over there so you can get there when you need to get back. I need mana regen. Because 100 mana cost and 30 second cooldown, I already struggle with mana. I'm gonna have to itemize some mana. I already buy a lot of clarities and shit, but I need more. I don't know how I'm gonna alternate. I guess just going Deso, Aghanims, then Orchid? That's okay. Not super clean, but can be done. Hmm. Yeah, Bloodthorn is probably very key now. We'll see. Added Scepter upgrade for Terrorblade. After casting Metamorphosis, a wave travels outwards in all directions, causing enemy heroes, only enemy heroes, to become feared for three seconds upon impact. Three second fear. Well, wave starts traveling after 0.6 seconds and has a travel speed of 1,000. One Spell immune units do not get hit by the wave. Has a global sound effect. Hmm. It doesn't say how big. It doesn't say the AoE. Is it like global or what the fuck is this thing? All right, let me see here. Uh, that looks like a very big AoE, but it's definitely not global. Oh, it's not just heroes, it's creeps too, you fuckers! Yeah, don't write heroes, just write enemies, thank you, Valve. Yeah, yeah you guys are heroes? And yeah, look at this uh, hero wave that was pushing down mid. Hmm. 
Yeah. I feel like this is gonna be even scarier for Terrorblade playing against Morphling, honestly. I'm not sure that I will, like, want to buy Aghanims for Terrorblade for this effect. Maybe. I mean, it's, it's good, but... I don't know if it's better than buying, like, Skadi or Manta or, you know, your other items that you tend to buy on, on TV. But if you're Morphling and already have Aghanims and then turn into Terrorblade, I mean, look that. That's scary, dude. Time is the cruelest cut. That's yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting change for sure. Reflection no longer affects illusions. Tidehunter has 20 more uh, AOE on his or radius on his uh, scepter, and distance is increased by 200 or 400. Remember, saw. More strength, more int, more base armor, has mana regen on level 10 talent, has health instead of XP, more 8 stacks? Jesus! One more base armor and 8 more, or 3 more stacks if you take this one, okay. Mm. Okay, very interesting. Jesus, Timbersaw looks tanky! 0.4 more strength growth, uh, strength growth. One more armor, three more armor if you take this one now. You can take HP talent and then you can take strength. Jesus, he looks tanky. I mean, you just go 225 health, reactive armor, 20 strength, and then you take the timber chain. Jesus, that's a tanky hero, dude. Holy shit. And spirit vessel was nerfed, so there's that too. Now let's 0.25 mana regen, intelligence gain, blah blah blah. Two mm, percent more on the spell amp, more cast range. Nothing big on Tinker. Tiny added scepter. First of all, he gets a little bit smarter. Quite a bit smarter. Added scepter grants you a new channeling ability. Tree volley every zero point four seconds. A random tree within five hundred and twenty-five range of your hero will be thrown towards the target AOE. Deals hundred and twenty percent of your damage to enemies in that area. Target AOE 400, cast range 1300, max channel 2.4 seconds. Oh, we're gonna have to see it. I I'm sorry, this this is one of those things that just don't translate well in, in, in reading it. My stones gather. Sure. Prepare for battle. No deposit, no return. I gather no loss. You got it. So when it crits, it crits on everything on that attack. It's like an AoE, it's one AoE strike. So it crits everything. Doesn't it hit buildings? It does not. So if it critical strikes, it's just a fucking, like, atom bomb dropping there. What the shit? But how did it tower take damage? It took some damage. Doesn't it feel like it's in some weird way? I don't know. I don't see it hitting the building. Do I have to click it right on it? Nah. Doesn't seem to be pushing. I mean, that would be too insane. Honestly, it still looks pretty insane. Now, I guess the creeps did attack. Very uh, interesting. What's the range on this shit? Holy fucking shit, dude. That range! Oh my god, the range is long. And what's the cooldown? 12 seconds. That is. A very strong Aghanims, actually. This is a very strong Aghanims, for sure. High ground siege? Hey, good luck sieging against Tiny. I guess he has a finite number of trees in his base, but, you know. <laughs> Still, that's scary to push up against. Yeah, you should get- now we have a reason to have Treant. Treant with the respawn talent? 
for the first time ever, actually useful. You can turtle, tree and the tiny together will turtle like fucking gods, dude. They will make techies look like a joke to you, right? Or you just have, you know, some crystal maiden slave run back and forth between fountain and planting iron branches for you, like, yes, me lord, here. <laughs> just, just keep by, where's my branches, CM? <laughs> you have your GPM talent, get the branches down. <laughs> That's fucking funny, dude. Yeah, nature's profit, of course, as well, but tree and the tiny together, oof. And uh, tree grab cooldown is reduced, grow armor is increased. Okay. Okay. Tree has some uh, mana region. I'm almost done reading, by the way. Nearly done. Um, Nature's Guys has been reworked. It's now self cast ability with 0 0.6 second cast time. No longer has a fade delay, nor gets interrupted on damage taken. Goes on cooldown after the invisibility buffs ends. Cooldown is. Four seconds on highest. Mana costs. Okay, so it has a mana cost now again. Nature's Guys uh, movement speed bonus rescaled. So it's a lot better actually on low levels. And the damage is rescaled to be a lot better on lower levels. Jesus. Okay. So I guess one value point in Nature's Guys is really good now. 30 mana costs, 10 second cooldown, sure, but 60 damage, 20% movement speed. Oh my goodness. Pretty good. Troll Warlord added scepter upgrade reduces battle trance cooldown to 35 seconds and allows it to be cast on allied or enemy heroes. It lasts half the duration on enemies. Cast range is 525. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> Oh my god, dude, what the fuck? That's so funny. That's so funny, dude. Yeah, 2B is gonna like it, for sure he will. Level 20 talent, uh, change from snowball plus 300 to minus 6 second uh, ice shot cooldown. Level 20 talent, snowball cooldown. Okay. 15%. Uh, Ooh. 15% and uses PRD. Okay. I see. I see, I see. Nice buff to the Aghanims, I guess. They're buffing like all the Aghanims, or trying to. A lot of them are buffed. Pit of Malice radius is increased. Pit of Malice cooldown is lowered. Or cast point is improved. Zombies now treat illusions like creeps, requiring two hits to kill rather than one. Tombstone takes one fourth of the damage from creeps and illusions rather than very good. So PL won't just insta kill the tombstone. That's nice. He'll still kill it pretty fast, but alright, that's a good change. Nether swap now has a 0 0.25 second cooldown to prevent accidental uses. This I have kind of a mixed feeling about, because yes, I have, like probably everyone else, misclicked nether swap and double swapped at some point. But 0 0.25 is a little bit longer than I think is needed. I just think there are moments when you want to swap someone out and then swap the next guy. And I think 0 0.25 is a little bit too long cooldown. I'm just thinking. For some scenarios. Tiny pre-casting volley in one area and Dark Seer and Magnus comboing on that area would be pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, Jero, you can definitely do some interesting stuff. Holy shit. Also, big thank you for the $3. And thank you, M Target Productions, for your 1,000 bits. I, I see the same, dude. I like that it takes so long for the trees to fly, so you can actually start volleying before things are happening there. But yeah, I think the vent this swap should be 0 0.1 second cooldown. I don't think it should be 0 0.25. That's... Because if you swap someone out from a bad spot, then you probably don't want to be in that spot either. So instantly swapping someone else, you know, swap an enemy or something, um, is nice. And now you can't do that, because now you're just like, well, they nerfed it to make me stronger, but now I'm weaker. I don't know. I don't like that it's in... It specifically says that it's to prevent accidental uses, but it ends up being a nerf as well. I don't like that. Um, base intelligence increased by 2, base attack speed uh, increased by 15, mm, poison staying is slowing for more, alright, Venomancer, whatever bro. 
Visage now has actual magic resistance. Summon familiar's health is rescaled from 4 to 700 to 5 to 700. Okay. Big buffs to Visage, actually. Chaotic Offering Scepter now lands the second golem 0 0.4 seconds after the first rather than both at the same time. Sweet. Fado Mons is now hitting everything but for a lower percentage. And Golem Armor. Yeah, nothing too exciting. Mana region, base attack time, or not BAT, base attack speed. BA, BAS. Nothing too big. I mean, 20 attack speed is really nice for Weaver, though. And Windrunner, rework Deceptor, now adds two charges to Windrun and increases the movement speed by 45%. However, it did not change the fact that she has a speed cap. She's still speed cap, but she will be very hard to slow when she pops Windrun, right? Because 45% more movement speed. Yeah, 105% 105 movement speed increase when she pops it, so... Wait, the speed cap is removed? Is it? Did I not read it right? Did I just forget to write that, or...? Let me test it. I don't see anything about that. The marks I mean, that makes sense. It makes sense that they should remove it if they're gonna increase the their movement speed so much. I just thought it was like a preventative <laughs> thing to not get slowed, which seemed kind of ass. Like the wind. Oh yeah, you're definitely above the... Okay. Prepare for battle. Maybe worth adding in the text. I don't know, that you can run faster than other heroes. Oh my god! I mean... <laughs> that's fine. So you have two Already charges moving. of them as well. Wait, it adds two charges. Do so you have three charges of them? Or what? You have one. It starts cooling down immediately when you use it. it. And its duration is pretty long. And then I wind run again. And by the time the second one is done, the third one is already up. Okay, so you have three wind runs in a row, effectively. Without any CDR. And you still have the CDR talent. Also, we should go back. My next arrow will find its go mark. out of this. So you have three wind runs. Feel the wind in Pretty interesting. That, that's really good. I mean, Agadim's a wind runner now is pretty good. It does mean that focus fire is different, but as we get here, focus fire cooldown is reduced from 70 to 70, 50, and 30. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why my videos are not like nine hours long. Verge, I bet that you, you got caught up by this, you know? It's like, oh. I really miss the old agonims. I really miss when Focus Fire was upgraded, you know, because cause the cooldown, 70 is just too long. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, level 10 talent from 30% win run slow to minus 2 seconds on the shackle shot cooldown. Wait, what? Did you just say minus 2 you realize that even without this talent, you could already per my shackle shot someone if you got Octarine, CDR, and Arcane Rune. You could actually per my shackle people already without the minus two seconds. So now they're just making it easier for us. I wonder how good it is without Arcane Rune now. Okay, let me let me immediately try that. And assume that we take the shackle shot cooldown now and CDR. I gust onward. Okay, they do get out of it, but very barely, very very barely do they get out of stun. And that's without Arcane Rune. Add. Oh wait. Oh, there's the duration talent too. Oh my god. Okay, so they don't get out. So with just Octarine and level 25, you can shack it. Permastone. Okay. Yeah, I forgot about the duration. Holy shit. Okay, that's pretty wild. I feel like that kind of power is not meant to be had unless you get Arcane Rune. Alright, that's pretty wild. That's pretty wild. Windrunner is pretty wild, dude. You're sacrificing Invis run for it though? I don't think you need to be invisible. You're so fast. I don't even think you need it. I mean, Invis runs are good, but... 
perma stunning people is pretty good too. There is status resistance usually. Disagree. I would say that usually there's not status resistance and occasionally there is. But most heroes do not have status resistance at most times. Of course, they could build it, but most heroes don't have it. And even if they have it, it's still going to be it's still going to be crazy, dude. Also, they um, put in the minus 20% focus fire damage reduction along with the mini stun uh, or instead of the mini stun uh, focus fire cuz no one ever took that town. It was so bad. I tried it a few times and it's just awful. That's good. Um Arctic burn, scepter mana costs. I can ready check now. Pretty done here. Um Okay, so Aghanim slightly buffed on Winter Wyvern, Death Ward is slightly buffed, Mana Region on Zeus, better attack point on Zeus, and Mana Region instead of Armor Talent. And that's it! But Invis lets you disengage from Blade Mills? That's true. That's true. That's one thing that's very nice about the, the invisibility. But I still feel... Um, I still feel like the... Like, with, with what you have here, you want that duration, for sure. 